Okay, let us begin now. And uh, thank you, everyone. So, what is this session about? So, this is basically SAP Sales and Distribution Beginners Class. So, this is basically we call it beginners of 101 class. It is for one hour. So the duration of session today, so duration would be about one hour. So we'll take one hour and then we'll uh, wrap up the session around one hour, sometime plus minus. That is our objective. Now, in this uh, class of SAP sales and distribution, what is our goal? What we are trying to achieve? So we'll basically uh, do a SAP sales and distribution overview that what is SAP sales and distribution is. And along with the uh, overview, we will also do SAP SD system demo. So we will also do certain exercises in the system as well. So this is what we're going to do approximately one hour plus minus some time. Okay. And uh, so uh, everyone is on mute um, to avoid um, any background noise, et cetera. There is a section and uh, which can be used for asking questions. We can use that for asking questions. So that is what um, we can do. So there is a section here uh, in uh, go to meeting and that you can use to ask any question which you might be having. And thank you everyone for coming and joining the session today. So that is the goal. Let's continue with our discussion. So SAP sales and distribution. Now, why do we this, do this course? What is the goal? Because when we do this course, then people can get an idea what is SAP sales and distribution module is about and what does this module can do? So that is the goal for this course. So people can get at least high level end-to-end -end overview of SAP sales and distribution. That is why we call it beginner's course. Now, let me briefly introduce myself. So I have been doing SAP since 1998, 24 years, many, many years. Um, in my, uh, these are some of the companies uh, where I did a implementation, most of them in the US, some in uh, Europe, some in India. And uh, basically I worked uh, with three companies, I was associate partner with IBM, uh, I, and I was in a direct with Accenture and Capgemini. In the US, out of the New York office, um, I live in New Jersey. I'm a US citizen, and uh, that is what I um, I have been teaching. In fact, when I started my learning, I become an accidental teacher and that teaching uh, has continued since then. So many, many thousand of the people I have taught in my class so far. So we'll give an overview of SAP SD. We'll talk about what its sales and distribution functionalities are, what kind of a business functions, what kind of business processes which are covered in sales and distribution and uh, integration and also talk about questions and as, as I mentioned we will also do some demo also in which I will be demonstrating 
SAP also. So talking about what is the SAP SD. So if you see here, the SAP is always divided into these colors. You see certain colors here. Now these colors, which you see at your screen, these colors have some meaning to it. There's a green color, there's a red color, there's yellow color, there's a blue color, there's a purple color, and so on and so forth. Now, what is the meaning of these colors? So these colors basically represents how SAP is constructed. So green is logistic, red is finance, yellow is HR, and then this is. So when we are learning sales and distribution module, we are learning one part of green, which basically means we are learning one part of logistics. In the logistic, along with the sales and distribution, there is also materials management, there is also production planning, there is also quality management, there is also production uh, plan maintenance, there are many more. Yellow means HR, and these red color basically means there are various finance modules like finance, accounting, controlling, etc. And uh, these are various modules. Now, which everybody probably should know that um, SAP is written in language ABAP. ABAP is SAP's language. This is called Advanced Business Applications and Programming. So it is basically fourth generation language. It is SAP's own proprietary language. Almost entire SAP, some exceptions, is written in this language called ABAP. That is the programming language of SAP. Now, when we're looking at SAP, when we are talking about SD, we are talking about functional consultant, not programmer. That is one thing which is very, very important point to understand. Now, if you see here, if you look at this picture carefully, you will see that along with this, each of these boxes, there is a open box, right? So there's an open box, open box. What is this open box basically means? So when we are learning SD, when we are learning MM, when we are learning FI or any module for that matter, what do we learn? We basically learn two things. Number one, what is there in the box? That is sales and distribution functionality. So that is the one thing we learn. Second thing which we learn that what various things which we can configure. So that is the second thing. So those are the two things which we configure in, uh, that is the two things we learn in when we're learning any module for that matter. So let us talk about SAP sales and distribution functions. Now, again, there is a color. So if you see here, there are again different type of colors. So I hope uh, everybody can hear me or my voice coming to everyone uh, clearly. So who we have on the phones, we have a Sherry, we have a Sitara, we have Yogesh, we have Mohammad Hatia, we have Sandeep, uh, Mahidduin, uh, the Sheikh, we have Lakshmi, we have Prashant, Zaid, uh, we have a uh, Muhammad Sudar Balim, we have a Sanjeev, and we have Suparna Dev. So thank you all, and thank you for joining the session. So again, when you look at this screen, then you will see certain colors. Okay, there is a blue color, there is a yellow color, there is a red color, and there is a this orange color. So that basically means. Every SAP module is divided into four buckets. 
every FCB module, whether it's SD or MM or FI, etc. So first and foremost, there is an organization structure. You can take pen and paper, you can make a note of all these points as well. So there is an organization structure. Then there is a master data. Then there is a business processes. Then there is a reporting. So when we look at the SAP SD module, or MM module, or FI module, or any module, for that matter in SAP, every module is constructed in similar fashion. This is very important point. All these different modules, the data flow of all the modules, SD and MM and all that, is very similar. Construct an architecture of every module is very similar. So that basically means if you understand one module, you can understand another module very, very quickly because they are constructed in similar fashion. So this architecture is common in all. So here, so below this organization structure, yellow, there's a master data, red, there's a business processes, and this orange basically means reporting. So we will be talking about these four things. So when we're talking about SAP SD, we will talk about these four things. The first thing we're going to talk about is organization structure. Now, what is the organization structure? So organization structure represents internal structure of organization. So internal structure of organization. That is what organization structure basically represents. So when we look at the organization, any organization for that matter, it is organized structure, internal structure of the. Now, what does that basically mean? So if you look at this picture here, we have something called company core, right? Then we have something called sales organization. Now, what does this basically mean? So let's understand that. So we have uh, something called company code. Company code basically is company. It represents a legal entity. What does this basically mean? That basically means, so for example, you have a Pepsi, yeah? Pepsi US, you have Pepsi Canada, you have a Pepsi UK, you have a Pepsi Japan. Okay. So that basically means they are separate legal entity. Pepsi US, although they are part of the same Pepsi, but fundamentally they are separate legal entities. Pepsi US is governed by US laws. Pepsi Canada is governed by Canadian laws. Pepsi UK is governed by British law. Pepsi US paying tax to the US government. Pepsi Canada paying tax to the Canadian government. They're governed by the Canadian laws. So that is called company code in SAP. That is what you see here, company code. Another thing is sales organization. Okay. So another thing which you see here is there is something called sales organization. Now, what is the sales organization? Sales organization basically represents selling entity. For example, like a sales department. In any company, for example, you will have a sales department. Now, how will you represent that sales department? So you will represent the sales department in SAP by a sales organization so that is called selling entity okay so that is what this basically means so that is called sales org so you have to define this sale is done by which sales department that is what we have now there is another thing here called distribution channel now look at this word carefully distribution channel okay Distribution channel basically means how the product reaches to the customer. 
So let's take an example. So let us say you want to buy a mobile phone. You want to buy an iPhone. If you want to buy an iPhone, how can you buy? So you can buy, you can go to apple.com. You can go to Apple Store. You can go to Verizon or AT&T or T-Mobile Store. So that basically means you have at least three options, three channels to purchase that material. So that basically means you can do e-commerce, you can go to retail store, you can go to reseller. These are the three distribution channel in this example, right? So that is what the SAP organization structure represents. So organization structure represents internal structure of organization in which you have a company code, which represent, uh, you can define that. Then you have a sales organization, which is selling entity, and then your distribution channel, how product reaches to customer. Now, then you have a, so in one sales organization, you can have a different distribution channel. So my company is selling through retail. My company is selling the product to resellers. My company is selling the product to e-commerce. So that basically means in my company, we can have three channels. The another thing is division. Okay. So another thing which we have here is division. What is the division? Now, if you see that in my company, I have a car division, I have a motorcycle division, I have a chemical division. Okay. We took an example of, uh, I, uh, you know, Apple, like iPhone. So like an Apple company, you can have, uh, you know, Mac division, iPhone division, iPod division, iWatch division, etc. So that is basically grouping of product. So what is the division? Division is grouping of products. So what kind of divisions you have? We can logically divide your product into different groups that become division. That is what you see here. Then there is something called sales office. Now, what is the sales office? So sales office basically means like a lot of company have a selling offices. I have a sales office in New York and sales office in Chicago and sales office in London and sales office in Berlin and sales office in you know different other places. So sales office is a classical selling office where selling activities are being performed. And that in SAP is called sales office. Now, another thing which you also can define in SAP called sales district. Sales district is what? If you look at this example carefully, north, south, west, east, and all that. Many times, you would like to define different territories. So sales district could be like a territory in your company. So, for example, you have a in 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 US, you say, okay, this is north part of US and south part of US and Midwest part of the US and uh, in, uh, northeast part of you. So, you can have a different geographical demarcation of your marketplace, and that geographical demarcation of your marketplace and SAP is called sales district. Then we have a sales group. Now, what is the sales group? Okay. I hope uh, you can all hear my uh, voice clearly. Everybody, is my voice coming? Okay. Just want to clarify. You can say yes and no in the in the question session. Just want to make sure sometime 
voice is not clear suparna can you hear me um, and uh, prashant <coughs> sherry <coughs> my voice coming okay okay good thank you okay so <coughs> so we have a sales group Now, what is the sales group? So, sales group basically represent the employees, you know, the people who is selling the product. I have a Michael Thomas, so that you represent in SAP sales group. Then we have a. Remember, in SD module, there is a sales and distribution. So, all these different company code, sales organization, distribution channel, division, sales office, sales district, sales group. These are the organization units from sales perspective. Okay. And then we can have um, distribution. So then um, we can have we call it different organization unit from shipping perspective so if you see here there is a plant there is a shipping point there is a loading point Plant basically means where the manufacturing is conducted. In your company, you can have a different plants. Shipping point, where you are shipping the product from, your distribution centers. Mm -hmm. Loading point basically means within your distribution center, you can have a different loading areas. So these are the different organization unit in SAP from sales and distribution perspective. So, so far, we talked about organization structures. We, we said there are four buckets, four pillars of any module. We talked about first, we talked about organization structures. Just recap what we talked about in organization structure. So in organization structure, we talk about company code. We talk about sales organization. We talked about distribution channel. We talked about division. We talked about sales office, sales district, sales group. In the distribution part, we talked about shipping point, loading point, and plant. So these are the organization structure we talked about. Now the next part is the master data. Okay, what is the master data? <coughs> now ultimately, we are selling to a customer. So if I am Pepsi, who I'm selling to? So if I'm Pepsi, then I'm selling to Costco. I'm selling to Target. I'm selling to Walmart. So for me, Costco is my customer. Target is my customer. Walmart is my customer. So all those different customers which my company is involved with, those customers should have been created in our SAP system. So that is the customer. The second part is the material. That basically means ultimately we are selling some product. When Apple is selling iPhone, iPhone is their product. When they're selling the MacBook, MacBook is their product. When Pepsi is selling the product, their Pepsi bottles is their product. Their chips are their product. So depending upon the company, they have a different products. And those products in SAP are called materials. In 
in sap when we say master data okay, and uh, <coughs> master data or customer master so customer master and master data customer can be divided into different buckets you see the customer master so the customer master do different type of data you have address you have information about sales you have information about shipping how we going to ship the product how we going to build the product related to finance payment term whether we going to give a 30 days credit or 40 days credit so in customer master you have a millions of different type of data gazillions but all data divided into general data right related to address phone number fax number email sales data which is maintained from the sales perspective for example if this customer fall into which sales office this customer fall into which sales district who is the sales person for this yeah. so costco sales person is michael walmart sales person is thomas so different you need to you need to designate that then you have a finance data also that basically me this customer what is my payment term oh 45 days how this customer going to pay by check or by online transfer so all the data is maintained in sap there is also something called partner function this is a very interesting concept now what is this partner function so now here in sap we can have a sold to ship to build to and the pair now what is the meaning of it okay. so sold to represent the customer so i have been giving example let us say we have a costco right so costco is our customer then with the costco we have another and costco is in uh, let's say head office in new york for example so their head office is like a sold to address ship to where are we going to deliver the product so when we are selling the product to the costco we are selling or sending or dispatching or delivering product to their warehouse and their warehouse is in new jersey or new york and pennsylvania or you know all different city and state across the country so those are the ship to addresses pair basically means from where i'm getting my money from so we're getting our money from their bank in south carolina so that become the address of the customer where we are getting our money from then we have bill to party bill to party basically means from where we are sending our invoices so that basically means we are sending our invoice their accounting department of the costco is in boston so when we send our invoice we send the invoice to the address in the boston now we take an example costco because it's a large company if your customer is small then all the four addresses could be in one place we are sending goods to the same place invoice to the same place and getting payment from same place but in sap you can maintain all that different information now we have a something called a master, material master now what is that basically means so material master is your product material master is your material which you are selling to the customer but material could be a selling material material could also be purchasing material and the material can also be of different type okay so now when we talk of the material in that material we can maintain the general data we can maintain the sales data we can maintain the purchasing data we can maintain the finance data we can maintain the warehouse data so different type of data we can maintain in the material let us recap we started a sd module and we said in sd module there are four buckets four pillars number one is the organization structure 
नंबर टू मास्टर डेटा नंबर थ्री डिफरेंट सेल्स इंफॉर्मेशन इन ऑर्गेनाइज स्ट्रक्चर वी टॉक अबाउट सेल्स ऑर्गेनाइज इंडस्ट्री चैनल डिविजन सेल्स ऑफिस सेल्स ग्रुप सेल्स स्टिक इन ऑल इन मास्टर डेटा we talked about two master data the one master data which we discussed is material master and second we talk about customer master now we going to talk about the processes now when we talk about the sd module in sd module this is the process which you see at your screen and then you will see three boxes and each box has a different color so there is some this reddish color this yellowish color this bluish color all processes of sd module all all means all all processes of sd module are divided into these three category sales mode uh, sales processes delivery processes and the billing process so these are the three processes in the sales process we talked about inquiry quotation sales order delivery and invoice this is the process flow inquiry means i am let us say i am selling uh, my company making iphone my company selling laptop and we have left we have launched a new laptop somebody calls us Hey, do you have this laptop? And say, yeah, we do. So that basically means that person is creating inquiry. And after inquiry, that person says, okay, well, I like this price. Can you send me quotation? And we send him quotation. After quotation, customer like the price, customer like the product, and then customer wanted to place an order. and then we create a order confirmation we get an order from customer after we get an order then we deliver the product so we get an order for this i for that uh, computer for laptop and then we deliver it and once we deliver we also invoice so inquiry quotation sales order deliver invoice so this is end to end sales cycle we got an inquiry of the product then we submit the quotation then we get we get an order we deliver product and then we invoice now that is what this whole process is about now we go back to in pre sales so all these processes divided into pre sales sales delivery billing and payment pre sales have inquiry and quotation now how do we enter the inquiry and quotation okay let's look at it so now i uh, log into sap so this is sap so i log into sap and uh, i want to create an inquiry so now you're looking at the sap system sap software this is sap menu and here when you go to sd module is part of sd so we go to sd sales and distribution we go to sales and we get an inquiry and this is the menu path so we get an order for inquiry from customer and we could want to create an inquiry so we click on it so this is create inquiry so we enter inquiry type in sales of 1000 1000 hit enter and then we get uh, 
which customer it is we enter the customer number so we just use any customer from uh, previous our customer is a step we can enter the PO number we can enter the date PO date we can enter the material which material we we are selling we can say we are selling this material how much you are selling so let's say we are selling 10 pieces inquiry we can say okay this inquiry is valid only from this date to this date because i don't want this customer to come after five years so we can put a validity date whatever that validity date is this could be one day or two day ten day one year five year six month whatever we enter and we set see the message in the bottom Inquiry 1000-3912 has been created. So what we did, we learned to enter a simple inquiry. So when we do end-to-end -end sales cycle in the master data, we talked about uh, customer master and the material master. And in the business processes, in the SD module, the very first thing we have is sales inquiry. And we create an inquiry. So this is standard sales inquiry. Then we create a sales quotation then we create a sales order then we create a delivery then we did a billing then we did document flow so this is a end-to-end -end sales cycle End to end sales okay. This is end to end sales account. So we talk about master data, business processes. We create inquiry. Now, let us say from this inquiry, we want to create a quotation. Customer say, yeah, yeah, this is fine. And now I want to place an, um, I want to, can you send me quotation? No. So we go to quotation. See, this is quotation. So we click on it. And we go to VAZ21. This is quotation. Great. This is quotation. QT. Quotation. So it's a thousand ten zero zero. Create with reference. So I can create a quotation with reference to inquiry. Create with reference to inquiry. And we hit copy. So what we're doing? Quotation creating with Reference to inquiry. We're creating a sales quotation with reference to inquiry. So it will copy the entire data from inquiry to quotation. Now you can do inquiry then quotation or customer can call me and we can directly do quotation so though that we have a choice do you want to do inquiry or do you want to do quotation do you want to do one of them both of them even after inquiry customers place an order or they can directly place an order i i have made up my mind i directly call and say i want to create an order so all of them is possible 
So this is a quotation. Hit enter. It copies everything, you know, my customer, my material, everything get copied. I don't need to enter anymore. And from ballot from this date to this date. Okay. And now here, we double click on it. We go to conditions and we want to enter some price also. The dollars, whatever. So we enter the price also. And then we save it. This is save button. And see the message in the bottom. Quotation 2003895 created. So we learn to simply create a quotation. Simple data entry. We learn to create a quotation. That is what we see here. Quotation. Customer valid from this date to this date. This is the item, material number, quantity, price. We entered that. Then <clears throat> in SAP, we can enter the customer order or sales order. Now, finally, customer like our quotation and they come back to us and say, you know, we want to place an order. Okay. And for that, this is our price. And how can we do that? So now they place an order. And for that order, we want to place a customer order. Customer has decided to place an order. Customer order. Customer order. Okay, so let's create a customer order. We make a note of the quotation. We go back and here below the quotation, we have a sales order, VA01. Hit enter. Then we order type OR. OR and create with reference and hit enter. We want to create sales order. You see that here create sales order with reference to quotation number. This is a quotation number. and we say copy. Okay. So what are we doing? We are creating a sales order with reference to quotation. So we create a quotation, we submit it to the customer, and then customer comes back, yep, I want it. So what we're doing? Sales order with reference to sales. If you see here on this Excel sheet, customer order in the customer order is basically sales order when customers say yeah i want i like this laptop i want to place an order and then we finally make a decision to place an order okay. and then we place the order the customer place the order <coughs> so this is the sales order This is the sales order. Now, if we see here, create sales order overview. Now, in the sales order, my customer got copied, my material got copied, my item got copied, my price got copied, everything got copied. If you remember, if you see here, we enter the customer material quantity and all that only once. When we create a next document, it copy from the previous document. That is the beauty. We enter the only data once. And then 
there is a price determination in sap you can enter different type of prices you see the price determination you can have a price surcharges discount deductions taxes so if we come back here if you double click on the line item if you go to conditions okay and here if we go to the drop down you, you see that how many different type of conditions we there are 51 entries rebates and cost and some calculated costs and some material price discount some customer discount freight and pallet discount promotion so many things you can enter billions millions a different type of different type of prices discount and surcharges and shipping charges and handling charges and freight charges unloading charges some promotion prices some commission prices some rebate prices all of them you can maintain so if you see here i have a my price hundred dollars i have a discount six percent and we can enter many other things also if you see here there's so many things here I want to enter the freight yeah? because if I'm entering the product, they will be the freight. So this is my price, $100 per piece. Then I have a 6% discount. It came from somewhere. And then we have a freight, $10 per kilogram, 1000 minus 60 plus 100 net become 1040 so there is a very extensive pricing engine in sap price determination that is what you see here different type of prices you can also do determination of the different delivery dates so if you see here in my screen so there is a delivery date, 1117. And if you go back here, in SAP, these are different tabs, sales tab, contact tab, shipping tab, billing tab. I enter my PO number, enter the date. And if we come back here, what do we see? You see that at different dates. If you see here, this is my delivery date. This is my material availability date. This is my loading date. When the loading should start. So material should be available on this date. Material should be loaded on this date. If my delivery date this is whole engine is there which calculate all that and this requested delivery date is this we can change it by default it gives today's date so let's say i want to give a date of some different date it changed different dates and after that it recalculate and we save it See the message in the bottom. Sales order 2701 saved. We are able to create a sales order. Now customer has placed an order to us. And for that, we create a sales order. Now we got a sales order. What is next? Next is delivery. So the next thing we should do is delivery where we have to deliver the product to the customer. I have to ship the product and then I send the material to the customer. So this whole process going on, shipping, picking, packing, 
delivery document, putting loading into the truck. So that is the whole de delivery process. Okay. And uh, shipping and transportation process, which you can do as far as SAP is concerned. And that is where we have, if we go back, sales and below sales, there is a shipping and transportation. Because ultimately, when you're shipping that laptop and desktop, we need to ship it, give it to FedEx or UPS or somewhere, or some trucking company. Urban delivery, create single document, and this is VL01N. Okay, that is what we do. And then we go to VL01. Okay. Now this is create outbound delivery for the sales order. Now we have to deliver the product to customer. So we go to shipping point. Enter. It's a delivery document. Now here we have to do different functions. We have to pick the material. And a lot of things. You see the loading material you can do loading function it is loading function transportation function you need to call which truck which carrier all that functions you can do is picking loading transportation and all these functions are done then we can do post condition so this is the post condition and here we have a post condition function in the sap system so we have all these functions picking, packing, load goods. You call the trucking company. Now, when we are looking at creation of the delivery, you can do one to one, one order, one delivery. Or you can deliver one order into multiple deliveries. I don't have entire product. I'm going to give it to you some next week, one some after next following week. All of that you can do. Delivery due list basically means for the warehouse, he runs a program, he need to know what he need to deliver today. That is a delivery due list. List of delivery, which is pending for delivery today. So that is called delivery due list. Then the next is goods issue. So we do the issue of the material. Now see that message in the bottom, delivery 8000 has been saved. That is what we have, good issue. And after that, the next step and the last step, we do the billing. We got an inquiry, we got a quotation, we got an order, we deliver product, and once we deliver, we invoice customer. So the next step, so this is the delivery document. I go to invoicing. So sales, shipping and transportation, and then next is billing. We bill the customer. This is the billing. Create. And then we select delivery document. And here we create delivery with reference to sales order and this is the delivery. After delivery, the next thing is we do the billing. We enter here and then we double click on it. And then we save it. See the message in the bottom. Billing document saved. Now what we did, let's see it's something called doc flow. So we go to V03. And if you look at it here, this is end-to-end -end sales cycle. And here, this is what we did. We created inquiry. This inquiry number, this is the date. Status completed done. 
Then after inquiry, next thing which he did was quotation. Customer did the quotation. This is the quotation number. This is the date completed. Then we create a sales order. This is the date completed. Then we go to uh, after sales order, we create a delivery. Delivery number, date completed. Picking basically means we pick the material. This is the picking number. Date completed. Then we do the goods issue. This is the good issue number. Date completed. Invoice number. Date. This is invoice number. This is the date completed. And then accounting document created, which will be integration with the finance. We invoice. Now finance will do the collection. This is end to end sale cycle. That's it. This is end-to-end -end sales cycle. We said one hour and we are done in 58 minutes. End-to-end -end sales cycle, overview of SD, which is what I was planning to show to you all. And um, I will thank you for actually coming to this session today listening to this um, SAP SD beginner course um, and one hour beginning overview and end-to-end -end SD sales and distribution cycle. With that, thank you. And you have a good evening and uh, be in touch. Uh, let me give my number and all that. I think most of you already have. So my number is Nine seven three eight eight five seven two four five and my email address dsadh at my thing three dot com. You can email me, you can call me as your convenience, and we can talk. So with that, thank you. So if you have any, you know, and we can talk. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And I really appreciate you coming here. And um, we said one hour and almost one hour we are done. So with that, everyone, thank you very much for coming to this session. And uh, let me share my number again. This is my cell phone number. This is a US number, by the way, because I live in the US. Uh, and this is, um, you know, this is my email, dsadatmythinkly.com. You're welcome to call me, email me, and whatever is convenient to you. Okay. Thank you very much. And please take care. Bye. Good night.